Good morning, everybody. Good morning. We got a special one coming at you live today. So good morning to the Facebook Live out there, Christy Elizabeth. Good morning to you. If you get a chance, I love when you say good morning to me. It just gets me fired up. Preston and I were up late last night. I'm sure we both went to bed after midnight and uh, I wasn't very happy when my alarm went off at 435 this morning. I'll tell you that I had to really <laughs> think about how it was going to make that work in my head. So uh, a but this lot guy was up at six. He, he was posting. I saw it. <laughs> <laughs> I was. I always got to make sure that I'm like, all right, I got to do my post. I got to have a lot of energy this morning. I got to really bring it. Good morning, Tammy. So, guys, I'm very excited that we have Preston here. Him and I, we were out uh, at a really great event, a black tie event with Larry Laughter on uh, mental health awareness last night. So him and I were joking around last night. We're like, all right, got to make sure that we watch each other, make sure we don't get a little crazy and try to get to bed at a reasonable time. Mm -hmm. So we're ready to rock and roll tomorrow. So um, for those of you first time being on here, thank you for being on here on the Mindset uh, call here. My name is Brock Zevian. I'm a life coach, a business coach, a real estate agent, and a dad. And I have another dad that is going to be uh, with us here today, Preston. Preston and I went to lunch uh, a couple weeks ago. You yep. know, kind of set the stage um, for what him and I uh, did, where is we, we've known each other. I don't even know how many years now, at least 10 years plus and been working with his company and home inspections. And he built this uh, from the ground up from literally starting from the very bottom. And I think it's so important when you hear his story today, he was telling me things. And I said, I said, listen, you be as vulnerable and much as you want to share as you want, because when you dive into people's personal lives and you hear their stories, like everybody, ha every successful person has a story of a challenge that they had to overcome. And when he shared with me some of his stories, I was like, man, would you would, would you speak on our mindset call? Because people need to hear stuff like this because they think that we just like wake up and be like, all right, it's so great to feel successful. What mm -hmm. successful stuff am I going to do today? And it, it doesn't happen that way. Uh, it does not come easy. It, I have the saying, if it was easy, everybody would do it. And so um, I'm going to set the stage here for you, Preston, that, um, you know, I, I really do appreciate you being on here, brother. It's been great getting to know you. And, and when you get a chance to meet somebody one on one at a lunch and you kind of can, you know, let your hair down and, and, and BS and really talk, it, it was it's great to be able to hear your story and kind of, you know, love for you to share what you, what you feel out there and um, you know, how you grew your inspection company, where you, you've gone. So kind of walk us through that journey and, and share with us some of those challenges that, that you faced here, brother. Sure. Sure. And thank you for having me. Uh, and, and thanks everyone for, for, for spending your morning with me. I know you've got lots of options. I, ho I hope you get some value out of it. Um, well, yeah, so Brock and I had lunch and Brock and I have something in common. We both came from uh, CMS, yep. <laughs> Charlotte Mecklenburg schools. Uh, I was also a, a teacher. Uh, and, and so was my wife. She was in the Catholic school system, but uh, uh, nobody teaches for the money. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> But um, going way back before that, um, you know, like a lot of people are early in life, you know, uh, very humble beginnings. Um, I grew up in a trailer park um, and nothing's wrong with that. I, I'm proud of that. Um, but I did, you know, ride the bus when I was a young kid. And, and ironically, I'm from Kernsville, North Carolina, which is Winston-Salem, Greensboro area. The same bus that went to the trailer park went to the nicest neighborhood in Kernsville. I don't know what cruel <laughs> thing. <laughs> so you became early, you know, at an early age, like, you know, you had the imitation Nikes. <laughs> right. Everybody else had, well, not everybody else, but half the bus had real Nikes. So uh, I became early on, I realized like, hey, you know, something, uh, something, but, you know, I'm not complaining. I mean, you know, hey, man, it's the, it, from a worldview, I mean, even we are very lucky to live in America, even in a trailer park. But, you know, it did sort of make you hungry for, uh, you know, like, hey, I, you know, I want to do better. But I will say this uh, about junior high. I think they call it middle school now, but I was like on the last end of that when it was junior high. My parents did save up and we bought our first house. Well, it was my step 
you know, my, my, anyway, um, it was a small house, but oh my gosh, it was like Christmas, you know, um, mm. it was the greatest thing ever. And uh, I just remember how happy and proud we were. Um, and, and I still tried to, and I channel that. I mean, I don't know if that's the right word, but you know, whenever I, we do inspections now, especially first time home buyers, uh, we've done some programs to get people out of public housing to their first house. Um, that's awesome. I, I, I can't explain the joy that 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 is um, because I experienced it myself and uh, I, um, you know, um, seen it in other people. And, and, you know, that's more than money, man. That's just, uh, you know, it's it, I, I don't know how to explain it. You know, there, there's 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 things in life, you know, obviously we want to do well materially or whatever but there, there's things that are more valuable to that than that and 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 that's one of them so um so what happened is i you know i went to, to school became a school teacher and i was a teacher uh for a couple of years and i started working for a company that was doing uh pest control and then they started getting into home inspections and uh i got all my licenses and you know all the various things and um I went to the owner of the company and said, Hey, you know, uh, I, I kind of had a vision. I could, I could help you grow this thing. Um, you know, cause I really kind of into marketing and sort of creative and scatterbrained, you know, they sort of go hand in hand <laughs> all over the place. Squirrel. Um, but the owner didn't really kind of have that vision. And I was just going to be a worker bee all my life. If I stayed there. <laughs> Isn't that so, funny though, how like I talk about environment all the time, but here's a company and they don't even have this. You have a bigger vision than they do. And that's right. why I tell people many times, like you have to look at your environment, people. And they might if, they, if you it's OK that you outgrow people. Many times you will outgrow people and you need to check out and be like, hey, I, I got to move on. So when you said that, that, that like triggered me because like your vision was so impressive. But continue. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I, you know, I started out on my own and, you know, anybody who's struck out on their own, it's tough, <laughs> you know, um, and, and I was a one man operation for probably three or four years, um, you know, trying to build a business, making relationships with realtors and, you know, trying to provide quality inspections, being thorough, but not alarmist <laughs> launching in my sales pitch, but, uh, <laughs> But, you know, it, it got to the point where, you know, and I had a pretty good life. It's just I was doing two, three inspections a day, staying up till late at night, writing reports. And, you so know, wait my, a minute. I, so wait a minute. You're telling me you grinded three to four years and you worked really late, got up really early because people need to understand, like, guys, if you want to make it in this world, like you can't bitch about being like, I, I've been doing this, Brock. You don't understand. I've been doing this for three weeks, three, <laughs> three weeks. Like, right. like you got to understand this takes time. And so three to four years, you're busting your tail. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, it, it didn't take long to make what I was making teaching. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and and I'll be honest, I was making pretty good money, but I had no life. You know, I, 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 we could never go on vacation. I was staying up till, you know, uh, later than last night, <laughs> writing <laughs> reports and writing reports isn't as much fun as going to charity benefit. <laughs> But um, so then I was like, you know, I, I got to hire some people here or I'm going to lose my wife. <laughs> if, I <don't. laughs> if I don't get somebody else, I'm going to lose what I got. So uh, I started hiring people and, and, you know, there's different stages you go into, right? You, you, you learn how to market. Now you got to learn how to build a business and you, you got to go from being a technician to being a business person and a salesperson and, you know, wear all the hats. But Eventually, you, you know, you do it all in the beginning, but eventually you fire yourself from everything. <laughs> you go in business for yourself because you think you can do it better than the way it's being done. And then you systematically try to fire yourself from every every <laughs> position. But uh, so we started hiring people. And I think I got up to like seven inspectors and we started doing pest control and uh, we're doing really good. Um, and then uh, we treated this house. Um so this was when my, let's see, I had, I didn't have the second child. I had one child, but anyway, we treated this house for termites and we treat a bunch of, you know, houses, but this lady, um, she claimed she had these chemical sensitivities and all this stuff. And she went to see one of those attorneys, you know, that, well, yeah, I'm not gonna mention any names, but they like to sue people. 
And uh, they they sued me um, and they tried to sue me. She said she couldn't work anymore and all this. And I'm not trying to talk bad about them. I, I have no I'm, I'm just telling you what happened. <laughs> and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, here I had built this business up to pretty good. You know, we had seven inspectors. We were, we were doing over a million dollars a year at the time and pretty good life. Had a small child. And here I get sued. Um, and um, it, 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 it so they tried to sue me for three million dollars. Um, and then, as it turned out, they tried to. They said it was unfair trade practices, which I don't understand. But you get treble damage, so it was really twelve million dollars. So here I am in a loss in my insurance so policy. Twelve, twelve million dollars. You have a lawsuit on you. Yeah. Well, it's not now. <laughs> right. No. No. But I'm it's saying like, like, yeah. like I and I told this to people early. Like in perspective. Like I was like my situation that I was in. I was like a hundred thousand dollars, one hundred twenty-five thousand. And when you tell me, I remember at lunchtime, you're like, "Yeah, it ended up being like twelve million. I'm like, "Yeah, what? So twelve yeah, million dollars? A, yeah." And, and my insurance policy is only a million, so do the math on that. <laughs> <laughs> and at the, at the time, I had a house, and that was about it. A little bit of equipment. I don't know where that other ten million is going to come from, <laughs> but. Um, so anyway, and my lawyer, you know, we didn't think we had done anything wrong or anything. It was just, you know, but still, I, you know, it doesn't stop. I mean, it, I, it's, but anyway, so this thing goes on for three years because, um, you know, until it, and it went to court for a t- two week trial. Uh, well, it's two and a half weeks, actually jury whole nine yards. But during that time, you know, some dark days, you know, I had built this business up and, you know, you kind of go through this, man, why, why is, you know, why is this happening to me? I'm a good person. You know, I try to do the good right thing. Why is it, you know, and I, you know, and I'm a, I'm a faith-based person, but I started questioning it. <laughs> like, God, why are you letting this happen to me? I mean, you know, and I, I, I went into the pity mode, right? We kind of had a pity party and I was like, whoa. And, and it was dark, man. It was dark. And, um, you know, there for a while, I thought, you know, I get, so, you know, and you, you work so hard to get yourself out of the trailer park and get yourself out of, being poor so you have a better life for other people and you you were on the way and now all of a sudden you feel like you got chopped down and i went through the woe is me you know and and i'll be honest i um i i thought about ending it you know i i i did i um i even had it planned out in my mind i, I mean i hope this isn't too heavy for anybody but i was like you know what my father has connections to the funeral business so i was I was like, I'm going to make it easy for him. I'm going to drive to the funeral home. I'm going to do it in the parking lot. And I thought about it. I really thought about it. I I even purchased a gun. I, I don't know if I told you that at lunch. I didn't even own a gun at that point. And, uh, and you know, I thought about that. And uh, I was about to do it. And then I thought about my kids. And I was like, man, I can't go out like that. <laughs> I, I can't let my kids know that I quit. And, and I gave up, you know, I mean, I'll – it's one thing for me, but to damage them, you know, would be something else. So at that point, you know, I, I, there was a change. There was a snap. Mm-hmm. I said, man, no, this isn't right. I, this isn't me. I'm I'm not going out like this. I didn't do anything wrong. I'm fighting this. And at that point, I turned to switch, you know, and uh, so I uh, I fought it, you know, and, and I went in the deposition and I actually wanted to see if this lady really had chemical sensitivities and I wasn't trying to be whatever, but I, I soaked my shirt the night before in the chemical just to see this never came out in court, but I needed to know for myself if she really had chemical. So I sat right across from her in the deposition with my shirt soaked in the chemical. I mean, I know this, I would, I don't recommend this for anybody. <laughs> <laughs> And she didn't, nothing happened. So I thought to myself, all right, so either this is totally fraudulent, you know, it's a charlatan, they're just trying to get money from it, or maybe she has some psycho, you know, some people, you know, psychosomatic, whatever. But either way, I, it, she doesn't have a reaction to this. This isn't legit. And I didn't, you know, th- th- this is all fraudulent. But um, so that even gave me more power. And I never brought that out in court or anything like that. But I just needed to know for myself. I didn't even tell my lawyer until afterwards. <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> and uh, so um, anyway, long story short, it went to um, a two and a half week trial, um, jury selection. I don't know if you guys have ever been through that. It's, it's kind of grueling. Um, but anyway, the jury deliberated 34 minutes. And they came back and it was like four different things. And we were innocent on all four um, or whatever. I don't forget what the thing was, but uh, 
flash forward, my 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 insurance did give them forty thousand dollars to drop the appeals because they can appeal it and it would cost that much to uh, do it, whatever. But anyway, I, fresh from that, I mean, I, a new start. So after that, I got out of it and I said, you know what? God gave me a second chance, believed in me, you know, and 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 I was reinvigorated to build my business even more, uh, and and we built it from there. Um, slowly year by year. I think now we're up to 28, 29 inspectors um, and we're in Charlotte and Raleigh. And, uh, you know, we're just trying to provide a good service for people. Um, we try to be thorough, but non-alarmist. Uh, but I'm, I'm really into trying to help other home inspectors now. I have a podcast, The Successful Home Inspector, in a, in a real estate podcast that you've been on. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know all the answers, but I've had a certain amount of success. And, you know, especially from if you look from where I came from um, and, and, you know, God's good, man. Life is good. And uh, I, I thank God, you know, he didn't give up on me. I, I mean, I hope this I don't mean to be religious or whatever. But no, man, you're are. fine. That's what it's all about. But uh, but now it's kind of like I, I love I do this podcast where I interview other inspectors. And, you know, what's cool is guys starting out who are struggling you know, later come up to me at conferences and stuff, say, hey, man, you know, I was listening to your podcast, you know, because of you, I did this, this, and this. And I'm always say, no, nah, man, it wasn't because of me. <laughs> you did it. You did it. But, uh, you know, you, you you know, what is it when, when you're ready, the teacher will, you know, whatever. If you're ready to make a change and you're ready to move forward, yeah, the stuff will present itself. I'm a thir- fir- firm believer of that. And, uh, you know, I heard a speaker say one time, you know, no matter what you do in life, things are going to get hard. I mean, I don't care what you do. I mean, things Mm -hmm. get hard, right? The S hits the fan. And, you know, one thing that he said, and I kind of did this too, was like, you know what? This is where average people stop. And I'm not trying to say whatever, but if you want to be above average, you got to push through this. And, 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 you know, this is the thing that stops average people. So no matter what it is, you know, when it gets tough, say, Hey, you know, this is the thing, this is the barrier, right? For the average people. Now we got to get past this. So uh, just a little hack. Um, But again, you know, learning every day and uh, just, just trying to, trying to do, do better. So here we are trying to expand into Raleigh and life's good, man. I got two kids in college now and uh, I'm blessed, man. Very blessed. Yeah, man. Um, so that's my story. I don't know if <laughs> no, I hope man, it's inspiring. I, <laughs> I hope it wasn't it, too depressing. <laughs> yeah. That's what it, I mean. When I heard your story, I and I, I remember to a T. We we're at the we we're at Wings. We we're at Wild Wings. Or no, we weren't. You actually, we were in the parking lot. And I was just like, holy shit, man. Wait a minute. What just hold, say this again to me? Because people don't understand. But they, they do understand. But you said it like average people, they stop when when it gets really, 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 really. And make sure you guys understand how many reallys I just said there. It's very, very challenging. It it's too easy. I mean, you had us, you had us, you had your life scripted at one point to get to that funeral home, and I was getting teary eyed because at a point. It doesn't become about us. It becomes about our kids. It becomes about our why. It becomes about something that is greater than ourselves to be able to push us past that breaking point. Yeah. And I want to ask you now, you're successful. You, you, you've, you know, we as entrepreneurs, we never feel we reach our pinnacle to some point because we're always striving for more, trying to get more. You're trying to go in different cities. You're trying to go in different areas. What motivates you today? What, what gets you up early in the morning? I mean, we, we, we probably both slept about four hours. Like what gets you going to be able to do what we do, especially you? I mean, I have my own why, I have my own reasons, but what is it for you? Well, I'm glad you asked that, Um, you know, and I did get into a little bit of complacency there because, you know, if you start out with really humble beginnings, your main motivation is to not be poor, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, like I've been poor and 
that sucks. <laughs> you know, I, I got tired of being picked on for my shoes and never being able to eat out, and, you know, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. and I don't know if you had this experience. The, the one time you did go out, your parents told you what you could and couldn't order. <laughs> right. and you, yeah. you know, <laughs> like, you know and, and nothing wrong with that. But early on, your motivation is to be successful and to make something a little more of yourself, you know. Um, but then after that, it's, you know, and then you get to a certain level. So now you need something new to, you know, because I'll be honest, I'm not trying to be arrogant, but I have a pretty nice house. I, I, I got a great, yeah. I got two kids in college. I, I got, hey, we can go and eat wherever we want. You know, I, I don't really want for anything now, but, um, you know, obviously I'm not a gazillionaire or anything like that, but, you, you know, I don't have that hunger of not being poor anymore, but you've got to set a new goal and a new target. Mm -hmm. But what's even better is if you can help other people. Once, once you help yourself, I always kind of feel like it's sort of like, you know, when you get on an airplane and the bags drop and, and, and I was, and I was a lifeguard at one time too. And anybody who's ever been a lifeguard, they always tell you, you got to save yourself first. All right. You, you can't save anybody else until you, you save yourself. So in the beginning, it may be a little bit, I don't want to say narcissistic, but when you're poor, your main thing is I got to be not poor. But mm -hmm. now that I have done well, I want to help other people succeed. And that's kind of kind of what drives you, you know, and, and I always had this saying, um, you know, leave it better than you found it. Um, mm -hmm. Because if you think about too, like if you were to uh, borrow your neighbor's lawnmower, right? Say your lawnmower's not running. I got to cut the grass or, you know, a truck or something. You know, well, people always borrow my truck because when they were moving, I was the only kid in college that had a pickup truck. Right. <laughs> but, you know, some people would return it, whatever. But some people would return it with a full tank of gas. And those people always stuck out and, like, I would let them borrow it again. So, you know, if somebody lets you borrow a truck or a lawnmower, what do you do? You, you give it back to them with a full tank of gas. So you leave it better than you, you return it better than you found it. And I feel like, you know, God gave us this life, this opportunity, you know, and, and, and during our time here, you know, we should try to leave it a little better than we found it, you know, leave a full tank of gas. I guess <laughs> that makes sense. I literally just wrote that down because that resonated with me is leave a full tank of gas because there's so many meanings behind that of leaving a full tank of gas because in, in everything that we do, whether it's a truck, whether it's like your neighbor, a, you know, a car, whatever it might be, it's always leaving a full tank of gas, leaving it better than how you found it. Um, and that, that resonated me when you, I was like, Ooh, that's a really good one right there. And, and, and hopefully people on here today, um, you know, understand that success takes time success takes work and we get in different seasons i shared it the other day like my my chip for my sobriety that was my goal when i was trying to go through that and fighting that every single day my first two years that chip doesn't mean as much to me now okay because right. I've, I've gotten through that i've grown through that now it's like my bracelets that my kids make me it's it's leaving it better than what you found it it's leaving a full tank of gas it's helping other people it's watching people grow it's helping them knowing that you know what we as as entrepreneurs as as inspiring people to share stories like you said it they're the ones that have to take the action we've taken the action and if we right. can help inspire you to take the action, because I tell people all the times that I know I, I, I'm not putting words in your mouth, but I know this for you as well. Like we don't think we're special. Like we don't have any magical powers. I'm pretty sure Preston in, in your closet there, you don't have like a, a, a magic, you know, cape that you put on. You have magic yeah. pants though. <laughs> it's, you know, <laughs> your bags. But, I did wear them too. Just in case. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that, that's my whole, uh, that's for anybody that know. I, that's my whole little shtick. I'm Inspector Crazy Pants, and I, it's kind of a marketing thing. I wear these crazy pants. <laughs> and it, it worked. It was your niche. Yeah. Like, everybody knows that as you. And I guarantee you, you just didn't wear those crazy pants one day, one time a week. You wore them every single day. You had a yeah, I got them all pants. Oh, I don't know if you can see them. There they are. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, well, I disappear on this uh, virtual thing. They're back pants today, but <laughs> you got your Halloween pants on. Yeah, we but talked about this. Uh, yeah. By the way, 
because uh, I was on a Zoom one time, and I'm known as Inspector Crazy Pants. I was on a CE class, and the guy was like, Inspector Crazy Pants, show us your pants. And I was like, I really don't want to be a viral video today. I wish you would have told me that. Anyway, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, man, no. But that's that's what it's all about is, is inspiring people, motivating people, and helping them get to the next level, whatever that level might be for them and how they grow. Um, so guys, for those that listen to his story, you know, we get inspired because we want to help people. So give us a thumbs up, give us a heart, share some comments on Facebook, share some comments in our zoom on how Preston made you feel loving the story on where we grow and how we go, because there's so many different things in our lives that, that you know, that bring us down. There's so many distractions, no matter where you are. I guarantee you, Preston has still challenges every single day. And I'm pretty sure he's like, man, today's going to be an easy day today. No, no problems today. Like this is going to be a walk in the park. (laughs) Never. (laughs) So I appreciate you guys, you know, being on here. Preston, anything you want to conclude with buddy? Any last words for us that are, that are uh, on here. And for those that are watching on Facebook and record and listening to it later. Uh, no, but I, I just want to say thank you all for having me. And thank you for giving me a few minutes. Uh, and I hope everybody here uh, has a great weekend. Thank you for having me. Preston um, for those share with us a little bit about your website or where they can get you for those that uh, um, could use some help because we, we do have a lot of new agents. We have people out there could, that could use some, some inspections or anything out there on how they can contact you or website. Sure. Sure. It's a uh, home inspection, And uh, there's a whole lot of free resources on there. You guys are welcome to have and use for your database as well. Uh, if you go on there, there's a section for realtors, and um, uh, resources. So we have like a lot of checklists, like uh, seller's inspection checklist, things like that, that'll help if you've got a listing. We also have a measurement sheet. (laughs) You can, uh, this is really good. Print this out and give it to uh, the buyer's dad (laughs) in a tape measure at the inspection. (laughs) And uh, keep that buyer's dad busy. But but, uh, there's a ton of free resources. We also have a whole bunch of home maintenance videos you guys are welcome to print these out. Uh, they're, they're on PDF download. Uh, you can even put your logo on it if you want, uh, but put it out to your database. Those home maintenance videos, you can grab the URL and put it on your social media and stuff. If there's anything of value we can digitize, we do, <laughs> and put it on our, our website. So uh, check it out. It's free resources. And, and that, you know, no matter where you are, I know it says Home Inspection Carolina, but even if you're a realtor in California or something, uh, there's probably some stuff on there you can use. So yeah, homeinspectioncarolina.com. Awesome, man. And I love the word you use value because you're always giving value. You're always trying to find ways to give agents and those in our industry resources because we know in a lack of inventory, you're not the only agent that you're going to be interviewed. So there's going to be other people that you're going to have to go against. And maybe it's something that he has in his resource in his toolbox that you print out and you take to your listing presentation, say, Hey, here's some of the things that we do to prepare ourselves because we know the buyer is going to get an inspection and we're actually ahead of the game because we have, we partner with one of the best inspection companies out there and they give us these resources. And let me just share with you what we're going to do to help reduce the red flags. I mean, those are things that stand out for you guys to be able to help you get more listings and convert. So, and that's something that we're also um, using in our pre-listing packet to be able to put out there, to be able to separate ourselves because I know I'm being interviewed by three to four other agents. So um, great stuff, Preston, man. I appreciate you, brother. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for being vulnerable. Thank you for sharing your challenges because we know that what it triggers inside of our brain to be able to pour that out and bring it back up. It's not like, oh, this is so much fun, but I do appreciate (laughs) you sharing your story with us and and, uh, those that are on here today. Uh, thank you very much, Facebook world. We got your comments. Thank you very much in the in the chat room, guys. We appreciate you all being here. Um, it's 845, guys. It is a Friday. Uh, I appreciate everybody being on here. We'll be back on Monday um, again with Mindset Motivation Group. If you guys need anything from us, any coaching platforms or anything else, feel free to take a look at on our Facebook page. And I appreciate you, Preston. Appreciate everybody on here. Have an awesome weekend. And we'll see everybody on Monday. Bye, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you for having me.